My beading lesson for today is about lighting and organizing your workspace. Before you can begin any project, it helps to get everything organized and, of course, you begin with the right supplies and tools, but another important element is lighting, especially when you're working with small beads and distinguishing colors. So you'll want to choose lighting that works for your area and also that you can use for color matching. So for example, when I'm sitting at the couch in the living room rather than at my work desk, I might choose to use a lamp like this where it has a magnifier, I can adjust it to be just right where I'm working. And what I especially like about this is it has the daylight bulbs so that you can use color accuracy. So you want to have, resemble that natural outdoor lighting on a sunny day. Um, I also use a portable style at my work table. So this one has little feet on it, um, or you can fold these in and clamp it onto your table. So this would be more for like if you're working, you know, in your office or the kitchen table. And again, you can use a magnifier, especially working with the small beads, I find that it really helps. And I want to be beading for as long as possible, so you want to take care of your eyes and you know, um, make sure that you're using things that make it easier for you to bead without eye strain and getting headaches. And as far as organizing your beads, I use a system like this for the seed beads because it makes it so much easier to keep track of all of them, and it um, just takes up so much less space in my workspace. These little bins, you can fill several um, vials of seed beads into these. And then, of course, you can label the outside of your bin so that you know exactly what you're working with. And you can see I have a couple of different sizes here. A lot of beads fit into these, and then you can stow it all nicely away. So let me show you how to do a beaded bale. This is a really fun little project and gives you an idea of some ways that you might incorporate seed beads into your work that you hadn't thought of before. So we're going to start out with some thermally bonded thread. And I've just strung on about 20 seed beads here. And these are size eight, so they're a little bit bigger. And then going to string this through the hole on a donut. And you can use this with any type of pendant that has a large hole. Then you're going to tie a knot here. And this is just a square knot. So I go over and through the loop. And then I'll do it the same thing on the other side bring this end over and through the loop. And I'm pulling to create some tension on my knot there. And then pull this through. This is my needle end. So I'll pull it through the threads and pull this tight. And so you're starting out with a beaded ring. And that's the, the foundation row for peyote stitch. Now the first step for this is to take your needle and pass through your first bead. So that's the first bead after the knot. And of course, I need to bring my work under the magnifier here so that I can get an up-close look. Bring your needle through. And what you'll do is go around the whole circle, adding a bead to every other. And you'll see that they'll start to pop out here. So my thread is passing through that first bead. And then I'm just going to bring a few beads closer and then pass through the next. So it's add one, skip one for this one drop style of peyote. Bring this through. And then this one starts to pop out. So that's your first stitch on the peyote ring. Then you'll do the same thing on the next and you'll just continue this all the way around to create your whole bale. And I'll take a look at the finished one so that I can show you also how that stitch starts to look. See how they're laying next to each other? They stack up just like this, and then I added silvers all the way around the outside to embellish.